This is English shorthand dictation number 279 and the dictation speed is 140 words per minute. Ready? Start. Sir, I rise to support the demands that have been placed before the House by the Home Minister. Sir, I need not remind the House that this year the Home Ministry's demands are being discussed in a context which can be described as almost unprecedented. It is for the first time that we are discussing the demands of this ministry after the country passed through the period of the emergency that rocked the very basic structure of the constitution and our policy and made the common people of our country realize what they have lost with the eclipse of their fundamental rights and freedom. Sir, the 19 months of rule marked the culmination of a concerted effort to undermine democracy. Those who wanted to destroy the democracy and convert our system into a totalitarian system had looked upon the ministry as the main instrument for forcing their will on the nation. They wanted to substitute the rule of law with a reign of terror to place individuals above the law to provide immunity to those whom the group liked and to harass all those who were looked upon as dangerous to the monopoly of power that the extra-constitutional group wanted to preserve. The then Home Minister was himself a captive of this group. It was practically a totalitarian regime and was therefore bound to be a police regime. That is why I would request the Home Minister that the whole police department should be thoroughly overhauled. Sir, I do not want to take the time of the House by listing the various agencies that were set up in the police department and the home department during the emergency. And before that, I also do not want to take the time of the House in describing the fabulous amounts of money that had been placed at the disposal of RAW and other agencies. Even the money was placed at the disposal of certain individuals and that was exempted from the scrutiny of the Controller and Auditor General of India or the Parliament. I do not want to go into all these details, but I would only request the Home Minister to go into these things and ensure that such things do not happen in future. Under the circumstances, the task of the Home Minister is therefore one of dismantling the police state that was built up by the previous government. Mr. Vice Chairman Sir, in the course of his reply, the Honorable Minister referred to some of the remarks made on the 18th while replying to question number 4 and he said that his remarks were misunderstood by some of the members. Sir, I really admire my honorable friend for making a reference to it, but if I say that some ministers in the Council of Ministers at the center are wise, how will you take it? Of course, in his buoyancy, he made that statement. I do not know whether he really intended it, but it only meant that some members in the opposition are wise and some are foolish. Of course, taken in a lighter vein, it means nothing, but I think such a statement as a whole could have been avoided. Now, sir, I welcome some of the statements made by him, and I submit that in April the vacancies were 64, and in July the vacancies were 67. According to his own analysis of the disease of areas and pendency of cases in the Supreme Court and in the High Courts, the judges' strength was less, and therefore this backlog is there. Now, the pendency as on 31st December 1987 was 5.5 lakhs. It has now exceeded 6 lakhs. On that day, in the Delhi High Court, the pendency was around 2,000. Now, the pendency is over 25,000. The sanctioned strength of the Delhi High Court is 18 permanent judges and 3 additional judges. The Delhi High Court has 5 service judges, out of whom 2 are from outside. In principle, I have no objection to judges being brought from other states. Among the five service judges, at least two are to be from outside. 
that means three are from delhi the judges from the subordinate judiciary do not get any chance of promotion i have worked it out and i find that promotion is given to only about 40% of the judges from the service cadre therefore they do not have the necessary incentive i think something has to be done in this regard also to give proper incentives to the judges from the subordinate judiciary if among the subordinate judiciary there are efficient and competent people they should be promoted as high court judges of course it will boost the morale of these judges mr vice chairman sir i am happy that this discussion is taking place on the problem of arrears because there is no doubt that the most serious problem that the entire system of administration of justice is facing today is the problem of arrears evidently it is on account of these arrears that delays take place in settling the disputes and if delays take place in settling the disputes the very purpose of settling them is defeated if a person has a legal problem and somebody is contravening this legal right unless he can have the redress within a reasonable time hardly any purpose would be served by providing a procedure for redressal of grievances i am entirely in agreement with the honorable member who has spoken on this half an hour discussion highlighting the problem of arrears pending in various courts now sir as i submitted in this house on the last occasion when this matter was being discussed in answer to a question i had pointed out and i still maintain my view that the most important factor which is responsible for these delays in the high courts and these growing arrears in the high courts is insufficient strength of judges in the various high courts now sir i would choose the conference of the chief justices the yardstick which has been uniformly accepted by every authority who has the experience of working in the high courts is that 650 cases per judge will be applied in determining the average there are some big cases there are some short cases and so on the judges may also sit on benches two judges may sit on a bench for hearing a case but the overall calculation is that an average of 650 cases per judge per year is considered as proper and reasonable rate of disposal every year we know how many cases are being instituted of course there are various factors responsible for the increase in the number of cases by which the existing rights and liabilities of the people are being altered i rise to support the bill as it has emerged from the joint committee while doing so i wish to make some observations generally and also in respect of certain clauses the objects of the bill as originally introduced have been enumerated like this that a litigant should get a fair trial in accordance with the accepted principles of natural justice every effort should be made to expedite the disposal of civil suits and proceedings so that justice may not be delayed the procedure should not be complicated and should to the utmost extent possible ensure fair deal to the poorer sections of the community who do not have the means to engage a pleader to defend their cases i wonder whether any of these three objectives will be achieved by this bill let us not flatter ourselves that this amending bill as it has emerged from the joint committee will be able to achieve any of these objects the code of civil procedure is a complicated thing it was framed in 1908 we have streamlined it here and there removed some hardships here and there codified some of the legal decisions and removed certain conflicts in decisions but that does not mean that the litigant is able to get speedy justice or justice at less expenses let us be clear about it 
I do not blame anybody, but by the civil procedure as it stands, none of these objects can be achieved. I am glad that some of the provisions which have been introduced are really good.